in your view, does this sequence of orders represent one trade or two trades? We're buying about one Bitcoin here and we're selling half of it at this point and half of it at this point. If we look at the way that TradingView represents it, it represents this as two separate trades, splitting out each of these exits into its own trade. But I could also say that for me, this represents just one single trade and I want a combined PL at the end of it. Let's say that this is my entry based on some indicator and then I have take profits or stops based on either time or price. It would make sense to aggregate that into one full trade. Things only get more complicated and strange once we start adding more orders in. So for example, if we buy one Bitcoin on three different days, we sell 25% of that accumulated position here, and then we sell the remaining 75% here, how many trades does this generate in the reporting system? Is it two trades, one for each exit as before? Is the whole thing just one trade? Is it three trades for each of the entries? Well, in trading view, it tells us that this is four trades. It does that because it works on a first in first out based system. This is all adding to this same long split position and closing it as well. So this first 0.75 sale here takes some partially out of this position and generates one trade. And then we still have three open positions. This one's still partially open. And so this closing order generates another three trades, giving us four trades overall. However, this behavior is not exactly well documented as you can see here. And every single tool or platform or backtesting system that you use will have its own opinionated version, at least by default, of what exactly represents a trade. And so if I save down this report into my files of the different strategies I've tested, I also have to save with it comprehensive little details that I've reverse engineered about exactly how that trade reporting system works. And that gets really, really complicated when I have a strategy on TradingView and then I have one in a Python backtester and then I have one on MetaTrader. People naturally change the tools that they use over the years. And so what I like to do to keep everything uniform and portable for the future is to save down the raw fills from your broker or from your backtesting system, whatever you have going. Any sort of trading system will provide you with a list of fills, which is essentially the ground truth about what happened at a certain time. I.e., I bought one Bitcoin at this point, I sold half of it here, and I sold half of it here at such and such a price with such and such commission. This is the ground truth and is not subjective in the least. It's a record of what actually happened at specific times. And then what we can do is we can create user interfaces and reporting systems to aggregate those fills as suiting our specific strategies or just the way that your mind works when it comes to trading. So for example, we have these three fills. One way to view them would be as a round trip. That is, we accumulate Bitcoin and then we sell off all of that Bitcoin. And when we're back at zero, we aggregate all of the entries by volume weight to get the average entry price. We do the same for the exits and we work out our PNL for that whole position of accumulation and then distribution. That is a completely valid way of viewing a trade and that might work for some people or some strategies. Equally, we could do this on a per exit basis. So this would be similar to what TradingView would give us for this particular setup. Each exit trade generates its own trade here in our table. So each exit order rather gives its own trade in the trades table, which may or may not be suitable for what you need. And we can also look at a per entry basis, which in this case is almost identical to the round trip version. The benefits of this approach of saving these raw fills is that as I've already mentioned, the data is portable. So in five, 10, 
20 years time, I'm going to be able to read this and understand exactly what was going on at a specific time. If I save down that trading view report from earlier, I also need to save with it exactly the rules of how that particular report was constructed in order to piece together exactly what orders were triggered at what time so that I can de-entangle it and convert it into whatever format I want to use. Whereas fills are relatively unambiguous. So there's the data portability aspect and it also forms a universal compatibility layer. So on most platforms, you can export a list of fills or you can make a script that will export the fills for you from whatever format they provide. And then it means that whatever kind of visualization software you use, say something like this, you don't have to rebuild that logic for lots of different input formats. You just have the one which works for every possible system. And then your aggregation logic is explicit and built into your code so you understand exactly what this means, what the round trip means, what the per exit means. Because even within these definitions for how we're defining trades, there's going to be some small nuances there that's individual to each person and each system. And there's just there's just no industry wide standard. And that probably never will be. Equally, we can look at other scenarios where we have two buys and then two sells. So we buy one Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, then we sell 25% of the position, 75%. And we can aggregate that in different ways. So here's the round trip version, then the per exit version. And we can even do a per entry version where each of these is considered a separate trade. And then we average the exit price. And then there's also the trading view version of the first in first out, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. One additional thing I will mention that I like to do with this fills data is annotate it with a metadata column. This can be as simple as annotating it with a particular strategy. So in this case, I've annotated it with the momentum strategy. And this would stop, for example, orders relating to one strategy being aggregated in and included in with trades relating to a completely different strategy, like a mean reversion or a breakout strategy or something like that. If you want to, you can make this even more complex and make this a foreign key, which refers to a metadata table that has the exact circumstances that brought about that order, what signal specifically triggered it. It's just something that I like to include and enhance the raw fill data from your broker. So in short, rather than saving down a aggregated report format provided by the platform or the broker that you use, which is specific to that platform and perhaps nebulous in exactly how it's constructed, and is not portable to other platforms later on, or your own platform, I prefer to save down any and all backtesting or live trading data as simply an annotated list of raw fills with the raw data that comes from the exchange, which is the atomic ground truth of the situation and is not subjective, unlike these report formats that you get, which can cause confusion later on.